Ulrich. Back in the kitchen now with Chef Dylan Moss from a new restaurant in downtown Appleton called Bella Vita. Um, and uh, you guys are, do a lot of Italian food, very, very fresh. Yeah, we uh, go for the rustic Italian, so we want everything to be fresh and vibrant and, you know, really down to the roots of a Italian cooking. Well, I'm excited to try it out. It's right downtown uh, Appleton in the Copperleaf Hotel. Great location. Um, and what are we making now, Dylan? Uh, the dish we're going to be making now is a, it's called a brodetto. Um, Every culture has their own variation on it. You have Chipino on the, the west coast or jambalaya down south. You have uh, paella. Uh, what it is, it's a fisherman's dish. Uh, so when they'd come back and, and what they uh, had left over from, from sales is the, the families would all get together and they'd put whatever they could of the scraps of fish, vegetables, um, you know, whether it be pasta or rice, and they'd all put it in one giant pot and you know, multiple families would, would be able to eat off this dish. So it really stretches your, uh, what you have at, at the house. And it's delicious. Let me tell you, my first time that I ever had Chiapino, I fell in love with it, which is kind of the uh, version they do out in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're fish and rinse stew. Um, so Brodetto, is that a, an Italian type That's name? That would be the Italian version, The yes. Italian name. So um, so sometimes you do, you, 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 you know, whether you're having a seafood dinner and you just don't use it all and you've got some fresh fish and you freeze it or you've got a couple of shrimp left or, you know what I mean? Um, this is a great yeah. way to use it up. You Absolutely. Know? Or you just don't want to spend a ton of money on it and you go to the fish, you know, market or the grocery store and get a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little of that you yeah know, so. always got to look for the deals you yeah know? I'm all about the deals okay so we're gonna start with a little a big pan big pan we're gonna start off uh, with a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil here okay just not sure if you need to turn the heat up there or not but keep that on nice and high here. Right. okay good deal all right so olive oil into a nice big skillet and we'll heat that up now we were talking about seafood um, this is we're using some shrimp it looks like we're using scallops what else are we using um, what we had uh, we have some shrimp and some scallops um, clams uh, right here and mussels and when you're uh, purchasing clams and mussels one thing that you want to look for is that they're closed once they open um, the, the taste of them really declines quite quickly so okay. you know if you give them a little pinch if they're open a little bit they'll close down and that just shows that they're just they're okay. They're all right. They're yeah. good. They're in there. Okay, so we're heating up some olive oil. First, we're going to start with the scallops. Yeah, we're going to start with the scallops. Those are going to take or a little the, bit longer to uh, to the, cook. Or the clams. Or the saying. clams. I'm okay, sorry. Okay. I apologize. Okay. Clams go in first. Those into that olive oil. And as you see, we just need a handful of just them. Just a little bit. You, know? you can put your stock in there, too, to give it a little bit of moisture to steam them. Chicken stock or vegetable stock, either yeah, one. Whatever you happen or to have around. Stock. Or seafood stock. You don't, I usually don't have any round, but I have it in my pantry in a box. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, I do. Um, so that's the first thing you're going to get going. Kind of think about that. What takes longest to cook? Um, shrimp in this case, I'm assuming that's going to go. Yeah, the shrimp last. and the scallops. Yep, you're going to put those in at the at the very last uh, thing you're going to put in there. Those okay. only take about two minutes, maybe. So, yeah. The other thing is, so this looks like a pretty quick cook, unlike um, jambalaya, which can take a while. You it know, could, yeah, uh, d depending if you're using like a risotto, um, which a risotto, if you're going to make it from scratch, takes about 20 minutes to set up. Uh, we're going to be using orzo pasta here, uh, so the pasta you just cook off ahead of time and then put it at the end real love nice it. and quick. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so our olive oil and our, our stock and our clams are going here. What's next? So our clams are going there. You can see uh, they're starting to open up just a little bit. You bet. Which means they're about halfway cooked, which is good. Okay. We're gonna put in our mussels next. And I'm gonna work, I've got a little bit of fresh lemon juice and some Italian flat leaf parsley that I'm gonna work on. So those mussels and those clams can cook together for just about maybe a minute or so okay. and those will start to open up. Orzo pasta, find that just in the regular pasta aisle, it kind of looks like, looks like rice basically. Looks like little rice, little football shaped uh, pastas. And you went ahead and just pre-did that, boiled it up. As you can see those mussels have opened up rather nicely there. Oh yeah, that's quick. So next we're going to put in our shrimp, just a few shrimp in there, and some scallops. If you happen to be out fishing and you only catch a, a little bit of walleye, walleye or two, or, you know, yeah. right? Perfect. Go ahead and put all that in there. A little bit of salt and pepper. So any kind of fish, you know, a little piece of cod or haddock or a white. You're looking for more of a white type of fish, right? You, you could put any kind of fish you want in there. If you okay. had salmon or. Okay. Um, you know, if it's a firmer fish, it'll hold together. But if it breaks up, that's that's it's perfectly okay. all right. Okay. Just uh, spreads a little bit more throughout the dish. Okay. Got my lemon juice and some parsley ready for you. Just to freshen up the dish at the end. So, and look at how quick. I mean, those shrimp are turning pink. 
scallops are just about yep. cooked through. Yep. Everything's looking real good, so we're going to put in the rest of our ingredients there. Okay. We have some uh, some Greek olive uh, medley here and some artichoke hearts. That's fun. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Right, a little bit. right there, I noticed, okay, that's where it's going a little bit different from Chiapini with the artichoke hearts, a little bit more Italian in there. Right. You know, and the olives, um, and we got some nice, good olives from an olive bar, um, very rustic. You can kind of get in there with your hands. Yeah. Is that the idea? That's absolutely the idea. You know, every, every community uses the ingredients that they have in their backyard. Sure. So. What's next there, Dylan? Oh, and then uh, we just put in some sun-dried tomatoes in there, uh, a little bit of pancetta, Ooh. and then some uh, some scallions to give it a little bit of color. So we're just going to mix that in there. And a for people bit. who don't know what pancetta is, what is it? It's like a, a, a cured uh, bacon almost. It okay. comes a, kind of around, but essentially it's it's Italian bacon. So if you can't find pancetta, which is a little bit difficult to find, um, just a little bit of bacon. A little bit of bacon. Uncooked would work. bacon. Uncooked bacon. Okay, yep. just go ahead and put it in real there. Real fine dice. It's going to give it a little smoky flavor. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yum. And then uh, some asparagus in there as well. Um, just what you have. If you don't have asparagus, leave it out. Yeah, right? If you happen to have some tomatoes or some zucchini Ooh. or just whatever you happen to pull out of your garden or at the farmer's market, you know, whatever Ooh. you happen to have in your pantry works just, just fine. It looks so pretty and just something a little bit different. Um, is it kind of like soup um, and stew? You kind of season with salt and pepper as you go? Is that how you... Yeah, you, yeah, you kind of want to layer that, uh, those flavors and, you know, as, as you go along. If you need a little bit more, you put a little bit more in. If you like salt pepper. I'm a big fan of pepper, so I like to use a lot of fresh gregged pepper. Me too, me too. Um, lemon juice, is that kind of going now or right at the end? Yep, or? we can put that lemon juice in right okay. now and uh, just go ahead and juice. give it a nice squeeze. Brighten it mm, up. Yeah, it smells yeah. really good. Oh, it, it, if you could smell this at home. And again, this is really light. You know, this is summer kind of um, well, any time of year, but very light. Very light, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And at the last thing is last the, the thing, cooked orzo. Yep, go ahead and throw in your cooked orzo. I would if I could get out of there. There you go. <laughs> and I, I assume you didn't overcook this. It's kind of al dente. A little yeah. al dente, because you know it's going to soak up some of that moisture, and you just you don't want it to be too mushy. So we'll leave a little bit to, of cook time in there. Okay, there we go. Just mix it all together. Here's a bowl to plate it up. All right. Warm up that orzo, and we are at the finish line. And that's yeah. all it takes. Yeah, yeah we are all, right. all set. Well, this here. Dylan, so good to see you. Oh, good seeing you. Thanks so much. Uh, Bella Vita, downtown Appleton on College Avenue inside the Copperleaf Hotel. We'll be back to wrap things up and say goodbye.